I saw Richie play and I didn't think he was good enough to play. You know, I just looked at him. Right and, yeah. You know, it, it's really turning into something, but all it was was it was meant to be a, a label for kids run by kids. Six months, 110 shows, you know, five trucks, three buses. I'm going, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? He says, I don't even wash my clothes for six months. <laughs> I think that you know there's there's ten or twenty thousand sets of eyes looking at you and, and you say hi and they say hi you go wow. it's a higher high than I think you could ever get from drugs or, or booze uh, it's I love to say that it's it's better than sex but it sometimes it sure as hell is and it uh it's something that you would you wouldn't take any money for you'd pay people to come um, not just being on stage it's the stuff that you don't see it's the waking up in the morning it's the writing songs it's a real behind the scenes view of what this organization is. Bon Jovi's rise to stardom in the 80s was inevitable. Their debut album preceded a headline tour and support slots with the Scorpions, Whitesnake, and Kiss. In 1987, they claimed the biggest selling rock album of the year, Slippery When Wet. Bon Jovi toured extensively and enjoyed their success as a band. Eventually, in the early 90s, John Bon Jovi started to concentrate on his solo career and appeared in his first movie, Young Guns 2. In 1994, the band released Keep the Faith, an impressive album satisfying critics and anxious fans alike. Now it's clear that you need to do something. Check the oh, I have to. Absolutely. It's more important to me to entertain those kids and the people that get Do you remember what it was in the beginning that actually got you off the ground? What? Runaway. I wrote Runaway in uh, 82. And I didn't have a band, you know, I didn't have anything going. Uh, but a radio DJ in New York started playing it, and one station snowballed into 20. And uh, that led the record companies to be forced to take interest, you know. And so I put the band together, which was supposed to have been for three weeks, has now been, what, seven years. Um, still the same guys, you know. Was Snake really a member? No, Snake was never a member of Bon Jovi. It's, uh, one of those wonderful things that they used to their advantage, you know, I guess. Uh, Snake was never a member of Bon Jovi. He understood that, I understood that. He, um, I was playing a lot more guitar and I wanted a second guitar player. And it was, uh, Snakey's an old buddy of mine, you know. Snake, you wanna play? Okay, great. Doing a couple shows. I saw Richie play and I didn't think he was good enough to play. You know, I just looked at him and, nah. And actually he walked up to you and said, Another I am time. it. Yeah, he says, yeah. I'm the guy, I'm, I'm gonna play with you. And uh, once we got together and, and, you know, I actually watched him play, you know, and hung with him and got to know him and wrote together a bit. We hit it off, yeah, and we thought that this would be a good partnership. But I saw him play uh, in, a, in a band with Alec and, uh, and left, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, pretty amazing, because now I'll tell you what, years later, uh, and you definitely go through, you know, periods where it's, it, it's a, Strictly not, it's a love-love relationship. I'm looking at another guitar player and I go, ah, he's better than him, you know? And yeah. I think, and I come home and I go, this guy's, he, he blew you away tonight. And, and uh, he gets so pissed off. <laughs> and now I've played with a lot of people, you know, this this whole Young Guns thing and what have you. 
And uh, I've also done, you know, four records with Richie, and he's a hell of a guitar player. And he's a very creative guitar player. He's, he's one of the best I've ever seen. It's all know? that good karma coming through there. I don't know, he's got too many of those crystals. <laughs> <don't> know, so. <laughs> those crystals are getting too. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Looking back on, uh, on the whole career, the past seven, eight years, I mean, when you've just actually been in the real limelight, what comes to your head the most? What memory hits you the most? I'm thinking Giant Stadium. It's one of them. I mean, that was a hell of a day. Um, I don't know. I mean, you just said it. I don't know at this moment. You know, I don't know. I mean, I remember getting my first gold record. That was five years ago now. Or uh, um, going to Japan for the first time. Going to Russia for, to set that whole thing up in the middle of winter two years ago. Um, I don't know. I mean, I remember going in the studio the first day to start our first album. So I remember all kinds of little goofy things. You did your Japanese tours over, over New Year's, and Richie's got a solo album going. So obviously with things coming up, you have your live album at some point. Yeah, it's in the can. I mean, that was the intention for this year to do that. Uh, but we didn't know that all these other albums were going to come up in the same year. Remember, we set out to have 1990 off. <laughs> And meanwhile, Young Guns and the Richie record in the studio and, and, uh, and Aldo and all these other things, it's not a year off, you know, it's just been work, work, work. So the live album is, is pretty much together. Um, Where was that recorded? Everywhere. Paris, London, uh, New Jersey, you know, everywhere. Um, but it's in the can. There's no intention to put it out tomorrow. Was it the entire set? Walk Away Renee and... You know, I don't even know, Cher. My mind is, is so scattered these days. There's over 40, 50 hours of music that we picked from. And uh, Obi O'Brien, who uh, has engineered most of it, and he's co-producing that with me, um, he's really doing it all, you know? I mean, he just calls me up and says, you like this, you hate this. He's doing the whole thing. Jack of all trades, supplier of junk food in That's Moscow. That's it. And Obi can't yeah. just do it. <laughs> Our next record is uh, is an important one to us, you know. I mean, it'll be my sixth album already. I'm, I just uh, need to step back for a minute, regroup, uh, get a new direction, you know. I mean, how many times have you heard people, you know, say, oh, this sounds like, this sounds like, and, you know, I don't want to have people consistently, continually getting compared, you know. Oh, it sounds like a Bon Jovi song. Well, Bon Jovi needs to go and create a new sound now, so that... Right. So, um, obviously, not, not regroup literally, just regroup within your own mind, Yeah, right? no, we, you know, within the team, you know, within the, you know, the mothership basically has to get back together, kind of. There you go, there you go. Just uh, looking back at Young Guns, were you surprised? I mean, you ended up turning out to be a household name out of that. All over the place, your name was everywhere. <laughs> surprised how that turned out? Uh, I don't know, you know, people have been asking me that lately. I think, um, I don't know how surprised I was. I'm pleased, but I, I thought that uh, it was good or I wouldn't have put it out. You know, I, I was pleased with the, the acceptance that, it, that it, it's received, but as far as, you know, surprise, I really wasn't because I wouldn't have put it out. I would have just said this isn't good enough. You know, it doesn't represent me or this movie. Um, but I am real pleased that the folks liked it. Hey, your videos rode so high on that. Blaze of Glory was Blaze up there for a was long neat. time. Yeah, that was really neat. They did it. Wayne Isham did a great job. As usual. He okay. really is good. He did a good one on that. Any soundtracks in the future? Anything else you'd like to do? Maybe a horror movie this time <laughs> around? Yeah. The Ghosts of Montreal. <laughs> um, what, what am I doing? Well, no, I, I would do one, but there isn't anything planned. I had so much fun doing that one, and it was really so easy to write an album for a script. You know, we're, we're, you're writing for a Bon Jovi record, or whoever it is, you... Uh, open up your memories, you know, and your diaries, basically, and, and you come up with an idea, and that idea turns into a song. Well, with a script, you open up to page 110, you know, and you're, oh, this needs, and then you write, and it's, it's all there for you. It's nice. So, none that you're thinking of as far as future there's goes? Nothing in, there's nothing lined up, no. That you want to do? Mm -mm, but I would, you know, so. If any of you have a movie out there. <laughs> So what do you look for? I mean, with the underground and all that, you have Aldo, you have the Skids, you have Billy Falcon. What do you look for when you get tapes in? Um, great songs, really. I mean, it's not like I'm a record executive or wanting to be a businessman. It's just the opportunity came up when 
when when Cinderella came to the label, Polygram went, oh boy, wasn't he lucky? Isn't that great? And when when Polygram passed on Skid Row and Atlantic took him, and then they sold so well, um, they went, geez, he was lucky again. <laughs> and then they heard Aldo, and they went, hmm, you know. And then they decided to make the Underground a real label. Then they heard Billy, and they just they ran over here and said, quick, get in the studio. So uh, Bon Jovi's now on the Underground, and uh, and Richie's first album's on the Underground. So, um, you know, it's it's really turning into something. But all it was was it was meant to be a, a label for kids, run by kids, more or less. You know what I mean? My attitude was that, look, I can help you out because A and R guys are afraid or they don't hear it or whatever, and I figure they can't fire me from my own label. So if I like something, great, go ahead, have a good time, go in the studio, make a record. Um, that's all it is. You know, it really shouldn't be misconstrued. Construed, I guess, as the one. That's the word. Just construed. Uh, <laughs> you know, as as John's sitting behind the desk, I'm gonna get out on stage every night and still do my thing. But in a year like this, when we're not touring, don't expect me to become a gardener. It's not, you know, just these hands just don't do it. That's right. But I know how to make records. That's so. right. up in Montreal, Canada with John Bon Jovi. Hi, John. Hey, sure. <laughs> oh, we are here. He is producing the new Aldo Nova record up at Lake Studio. And how are things going thus far? Good. Good. Everything's going real good. I'm uh, at his schedule. Aldo's demos are so detailed that it's easy. And we've waited so long to do this record that it's, we knew exactly what we were doing when we came in. I was curious, out of all the tapes that you get, continually for the past 10 years. What uh, what did he have that sparked you to, to take him on with the underground? And uh, Aldo's a buddy of mine. I, uh, he's been a friend for a lot of years. I met him when he was recording his first album in uh, 82 in New York. And uh, we, we stayed close ever since. Well, he made three albums and then really put it by the wayside for a while. And he'd just been writing and uh, he moved back here to Montreal. Um, he just got away from it, you know, but he wants it again, he wants to do it, and he's got some great songs. So when I had the opportunity to do it, I jumped at it. And did he, uh, he did help out with Young Guns, did he not? He plays all over Young Guns, yeah. He actually plays on my first album as well. Um, he plays on Runaway. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. plays on Runaway. So, see, I've known Aldo a, a lot of years, so, you know, when the opportunity for me to do something with him came up, I jumped at it, sure. How'd you two meet each other in the first place? We used to do uh, television commercials. <laughs> Home <laughs> videos. Mel Strip George. Short, short. We used to be Mel Strippers. Yeah, Chip and Dale's. I'm Chip, he's Dale. <laughs> uh, we're really glad to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> I was working at the power station mixing uh, my first record, and uh, he was working there, and we had a mutual acquaintance that uh, was working on the album, and he would always come in, and. And I just let him hang out, and he was real nice, and we got to know each other, and we just uh, became friends from there. It was, uh, it was it. And after I that, like the Chip and Dale story. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chip, and this is Dale. Come down to our bar anytime. Bring your sister. And your mother, too. <laughs> I love your sister. <laughs> this is when you were working at the place, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Eight years now. Actually, it was more, you know, it was 81, now that I think about it. Because the record came out in 82, so it was 1981. It's going to be like... Getting old. Nine years, yeah, we are getting old. I'm getting old right with you. <laughs> yeah. Just do one of these two guitars.
that in the in the F inversion. And how did you guys keep contact with each other? And when did you decide to get together and start working on uh, these projects? Well, it's been a year and a year and almost a half that we've been working on this record, getting it getting it to the point that we were going to go in the studio. Um, but through the years, we stayed in contact with him. And Aldo, I met him when he was doing his record, and then he played on Runaway in '82, and my first record. Um, we stayed in touch through his first two, two records. Two records, yeah. And, and then uh, Young Guns, you know, we we did that. He, Aldo plays all over that record, and now um, we're doing his album. Got a lot of good songs too. That's where really we, you know, songs. we started with that. We started with, you know, real good songs that we just could play only on an acoustic. That's how we wrote. You know, we wrote only on an acoustic guitar and a pad and a little Radio Shack, uh, you know, tape recorder. And if it stood up, you know, then we decided to go a little further ahead with that. And it, uh, now we're here. You know, when Fantasy came out, Monkey on Your Back, you know, that was pre, uh, you know, not to sound like we're dated or whatever, but pre this type of music. How can I explain it? Pre-Motley Crue, pre-Rat Bon Jovi, Poison, Warren, blah, 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 blah. Um, and Fantasy's still a staple of the radio. You know, today, well, you're going to hear the 1990 version of a hell of an album here. It's got real play, playership on it. It's got, it's got a lot to offer. truth of the matter is, is that, as you know, anyone who knows me knows, is I, I call anyone a kid, you know, a six to sixty, you know, a fan or not a fan. If you want to hear songs, come on in, have a seat, tell me what you think, because I'm lost. You know? yeah. We write so many songs uh, that you have personal favorites because you used that guitar on it, you know, well, nobody hears that guitar. Did the storyline relate to you and you, then you liked it and that's why, you know what I mean? You get hung up in, I like it for a production reason. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a better song than an, another one. Even for this album, we cut 12 songs. We wrote 20-something. Um, and the 12 have to be narrowed down to either 10 or 11. So something's got to go, but we can't even do it. It's difficult to do. So you have to get somebody else's opinion and go, I give up. Yeah, you we, would pick it. We had his brother, little brother, listen to it and with his friends and anybody who'd listen to it. Uh, and give us like a points, you know, rating like between, let's say, one to ten, and then we narrowed it down from there. Did their their answer surprise you in any certain way? Some of them. Some, some of them I didn't expect did. at all. Like some of the stuff that, uh, actually one of the songs he didn't even like, you know, like Bright Lights, he was going, I, you know, this won't fit. You know? Yeah, and, and, and then, it's like everyone's favorite. And they just went, uh, well, play, you know, I, it, that was on a, uh, the demo, and it was, he thought there was only four songs in the tape, and it was five. This was at the end of it, and I snuck it on. And then he gave it to his brother, and, and he says, which song do you like the best? And he goes, the fifth one. He goes, there's no fifth one on the tape, and there wasn't. That's why I like it. And then everybody likes it. You know? So I mean, I'm glad. I'm really happy, because I really was uh, partial to the song. <laughs> We're working on Bright Lights, the tuning nightmare. <laughs> it's a song called Bright Lights. It's a tribute to uh, the old Deep Purple uh, songs like Highway Star and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, got these big organ breaks in it. I got my John Lord 
chord setting here. We're in John Lord mode. Can you overdrive that? Yeah, Leslie. Back on Young Guns, Aldo, what do you remember the most happening back in AM? With, with the Rainbow out? Bar and Grill, that's what <laughs> <I remember>. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, it was just like a blur. I mean, meeting all those great people, you know, I was a big fan of all of them, and Elton and Little Richard and uh, Jeff Beck. I mean, you know, everybody wants to meet Jeff Beck. So, uh, let alone go to the movies. Beck, remember Beck doing all those great impersonations? Remember the movie The Producers? Yes. Zero Mustel, you know? He did everything. We're going up this escalator, and Jeff is a real quiet, shy guy, you know? And he's going up the escalator to the movie theater, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, man, it's, you know, it's me and Aldo, and Matias from the Scorpions, and Jeff Beck, and a bunch of folks. We're all going to the movies on, like, a Friday night, you know? And we're going, this isn't going to last. I know I'm with Jeff Beck. Everyone's going to wreck I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about Beck, right? Yeah. So he's going up the thing and I'm going, well, maybe if we're like really cool, just slip into the theater. Nobody's going to notice Jeff and we're going to have a good time. Well, he stops and gets candy and popcorn first. Then he starts throwing around. Then he starts doing these invitations from the producers and he's walking through the aisles and going, springtime for Hitler. Hitler. And I'm going, whoa, and don't, don't cause too much of that. Right, I mean, he's doing the goose step down the hall. He's like, this is great. And nobody notices. The, no. only one, the only one they pick out is Matthias. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's all dressed up in leather yeah, and, you know, you know, he's got the whole shtick down, yeah. so. It was really funny. Beck's great. I mean, he's like a little kid, you know? He's like, enough work. Let's go play with my car. And he jumps in the deuce coupe and you drive around. And it was exactly. big thrill. Yeah. So you're out here and you're up against these, uh, not necessarily young guns to use the term, but like you said, you hear all these bands and you see them on videos and stuff and you say, I can do that. No, you're I can here, do and, and I'm here and I've actually got a real shot now with John, you know? And, uh, it's good that to have him there because he's somebody that I respect a lot. I mean, you know, he's, I really respect what he says, and he's had a lot of success, and he's got a really good ear for, for stuff. Where I, he has an instinct for music, and I have a lot of technical, you know, uh, talents. Like in the studio, there's nothing that I really can't do in the studio. But since I, I'm so involved with all the songs and all the instruments and everything, I just can't sit back away from it. And and having him be on the board, he can really actually tell me. Well, this part, you know, is not very good, or you can do better, or, in his words, you suck. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, his words. Go back about 30, 40 seconds from here. Of uh, what we're seeing today, how, you're gonna, you're in here for six weeks or something, sir, before you move down to Jersey, or what's happening? No, here? we're only here for three weeks. Actually, we started October 22nd. Now we're November 5th, and we've got most of it done. We've got out just I'm just smoking. I mean, we start in the morning, and and I'll start a song in the morning, and by the end of the day, it's done. I mean, that's it, except for vocals. Then we do a couple more weeks at Johnny's house, but we have to be finished by December 19th because he's going back out with uh, the band and going to Tokyo. I was just thinking of, of what this all actually means to you, but I'm thinking probably the best angle to take from that is when you're live and you're on stage and you're in front of all those kids. What does it all mean to you then? What sort of feelings running through you? It's hard to explain to somebody who um, isn't actually in the shoes of the guy singing out there, you know, actually doing it. Because um, to think that, you know, there's, there's 10 or 20,000 sets of eyes looking at you and, and you say hi and they say hi, you go, wow. <laughs> It works, you know. <laughs> the microphone's on, you know. Um, it's a higher high than I think you could ever get from drugs or, or booze. Uh, it's. I love to say that it's it's better than sex, but it sometimes it sure as hell is, and it uh, 
it's something that you would you wouldn't take any money for. You'd pay people to come. You you know, there's nothing like it. Um, when I'm out there, I'm real grateful to be a part of it. You know, when I'm not, I don't want to be anywhere near it. You know, I mean, this is definitely off time right now, and I look at a show and I go, I don't miss that a bit. You know, because you need to go, you need to recharge your batteries. Because we're not a band that tours for. Um, Six months, you know. Remember the old Journey movie that NFL Films made? Did you ever see that home video? Journey did a home video in 1983. And the guy from NFL Films, that great voice, Journey, the premier rock yes. band. I'm watching it the other day, and I had seen it. Our first tour, I watched it. And I went, wow, that's the big time. Look at that. And I watched it now, just recently. And they're going, six months, 110 shows. You know, five trucks, three buses. I'm going, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. He says, I don't even wash my clothes for six months. <laughs> so it's not like we, uh, we don't tour for six months. We tour for 18 months. Yeah. So after 18 months, you know, it's like I got to the to 237th show of the, the last tour and was feeling great. And then I talked to Alec and, uh, and I guess it was Richie too, that maybe they didn't admit it for about six weeks later. But they said, the final six weeks of that tour, we weren't even there, man. <laughs> we died, and you just carried our luggage around. Because, <laughs> you know, and there I was going, yeah, yeah, let's go to work. Those so, were the, the Mexico shows, were they not? In the Mexico, last six weeks? yeah, the last show, Brazil number 236 and 237, we did this two shows in the same day. In a stadium, 55,000 seat stadium, packed, you know. And we played two, a matinee and then the night show. And I felt great. And then, you know, Alec and Richie said to me, man, we weren't even there the last six weeks. <laughs> we you don't know? remember it. So then. we tour, we tour, you know, so when it's off time, see you later, Alec. Yeah. One thing that the kids can least deal with next year is a home video. Yeah, that's fun. It's uh, Tales of the Road, more or less, you know. I mean, it was, I think they call it Access All Areas, which is funny because I set out to document the, the Jersey tour. And um, I had the idea while we were recording the album, but nobody listened, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> and uh, we, didn't, we didn't roll any film. Um, I was really sorry that I didn't you know, follow my instincts and do it, but from like the third or fourth show on the tour through the end of the tour, we filmed. And uh, we wanted folks to get a feel of what the band was about, because so often we're uh, misunderstood in the press or... or or were misunderstood, you know, even by our, I don't know, our critics or whatever you want to, you know, the radios, the TVs, whatever. So we thought that after seeing a movie like Rattle and Hum, and I had seen Imagine, and I had seen Elvis in 56, like all within a week's period, I said, you know, we need a little of that, a little of that, and a little of that. But nobody really captured what it was like to do what all of us were fortunate enough to do. Get out there and tour and see the world and that kind of thing. But show you the real behind the scenes, show you what it's like when you have a miserable night, show you what it's like when you have a great night, you know? Um, not just being on stage, it's the stuff that you don't see. It's the waking up in the morning, it's the writing songs, it's a real behind the scenes view of what this organization is. You know? But in terms of seeing the real McCoy, I remember you in the editing bay and you're going, no, 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 or yes, 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 it wasn't getting a lot of the things that you really yeah. wanted. So how would you really felt if you woke up and there was Wayne and Kurt with a video camera in your face the minute you opened your eyes? I mean, some things just aren't possible. Well, I mean, if you look on the Wanted video, there's actual scenes of, of Tico and, and I believe Al waking up, hungover, feeling like death, because the rules were when we were doing that video, I remember at that time was, don't chain your doors, anything's possible. And you, you know, you'd be at, like late at night going, oh God, I hope they're not coming in here now. Uh, but in the morning, you know, there you were helpless and alone, and uh, you go, oh, Christ, they're here, and they got a camera. So that was the rules, you know, anything was possible. They captured what they could, the best they could. I mean, we didn't have millions of dollars to make a movie, you know. But we, uh, I think that we truly captured the essence of what the band is. It's entertaining. So in all the people in it, you made sure that you got all the crew people in it. Oh, yeah. As, ma as many as I possibly could. Uh, I got in there, yeah, and, and from Australia to South America to Mexico to New Jersey to California, I mean, all through Europe. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah. That's going to take care of the visual, and when are you going to get around to doing a book? 
I've bugged you about this for years. There's a book in you, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the X-rated book. Uh, no, NC-17. No, yeah, right, NC-17. No, no books in my, not now. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to uh, what's your favorite thing to do when you have time off and you're not doing anything Sleeping happening around. And eating. That's a good answer, I like that. <laughs> It becomes a hobby. You don't sleep and you don't eat regularly anymore. So that's why people often wonder why guys in bands wear sunglasses. <laughs> and you know, like Halloween, I was a raccoon. I just haven't taken off the black circles under my eyes. Last one, just as a talk over, as we were walking up, as you were walking up, I want you to tell me about just in terms of coming up here to Canada and what you think of the studio with the lake and the canoeing down or something of the sort. So, so, so we could, it can go over you and I walking up the steps of why you're here or something of the sort. I think I lost a bet, that's why I'm here. I, uh, <laughs> or, 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 or answer B will be something like, uh, I heard they were going to reinstate the draft, so I, I got here quick, you know? Uh, so you're not a fan of Canada? Is that what no, you're I love Canada. We do the Bon Jovi records in Vancouver. Um, Vancouver is the greatest city in the free world, as far as I'm concerned. Um, no, this is a nice place. I'm just making fun of it because it's cold and it's gray, and the moose are starting to look good to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> no strip bars, obviously. You want to pack a gum? It's a 10-minute drive. So believe me, <laughs> I just take the, the like Club magazine and turn it around like this. <laughs> <you know? laughs>